Gunk holing, the ability to sail into a cove and set an anchor and know it will hold, is prevalent on Maine's myriad islands and along its coast. This sailing wonderland attracted yachtsmen escaping from the summer heat of eastern seaboard cities who eventually settled in summer colonies. Recreational boats designed to take advantage of the wind and waves for a thrilling day at sea were imported or commissioned by the summer colonies. For the last 14 years of his life, Maine author and artist George Wasson roamed Penobscot Bay in the simple 23-foot sloop, which he commissioned in 1917. When he grew too frail to sail, he slept aboard his boat in the summer in Castine. Wasson designed his boat using a model, selecting the timbers and working alongside the builders at Cobb Brothers Boatyard and Brewer, some of the last generation of wooden shipbuilders on the bay. Her rigging was workboat simple, and she was never engined. Wasson carved her innate tiller and name board. Wasson is best known for his book, Sailing Days on the Penobscot. Many of the stories he collected have been told first in the Wavecrest cabin. In the early decades of the 20th century, yacht clubs commonly got their fleets custom designed. In 1924, Edsel Ford, son of Mo Henry of Model T fame, a member of the Bar Harbor and Seal Harbor Yacht Clubs, commissioned a racing and day sailing boat, the 21 and a half foot Mount Desert Island knockabout sloop. Boston designer Ralph Winslow created a high sided dry stable boat, which was built by Dorchester, Massachusetts, George Lolly Company. Our sloop Squall was number nine in the series and was originally called Spark Plug after Barney Google's horse, which always came in last. The summer colony on Fox Island Thoroughfare commissioned John Alden to design the North Haven sailing dinghy based on the lines of our Elfin built by James Ossie Brown in 1888 and that of the schooner yacht Jitania's tender. Bob is a 1903 example of the 14 foot eight inch North Haven dinghy, the oldest actively raced one design class in North America. The class did not catch on elsewhere because its axe-like bow and eminently sinkable inside ballast made for a wet ride. The DeLand family boathouse on Fox Island Thoroughfare consisted of the boats you see here, a sailing and rowing canoe, rowboats, and a hydroplane. In addition to building North Haven dinghies, J.O. Brown & Son Boatyard also built other boats. In the 1920s, the Browns built these launches for their North Haven summer customers to serve as waterborne station wagons, calling on friends, meeting the ferry, serving as a tender to larger yachts, and going on picnics. If needed, these 22-foot, 4-inch launches powered by a 40-horsepower gas engine could make the wet run across Penobscot Bay to Rockland. Senator Leverett Saltonstall of Boston and his family used this launch, named Useful, during the summer months. During the celebrations for the 100th anniversary of the North Haven dinghy in 1987, Useful was the committee boat for the Centennial Regatta. Yacht designer Sterling Burgess created the 14-foot Brutal Beast class for junior sailing in Marblehead, Massachusetts. Cat rigged, having a single sail mounted far forward, it was a safe, stable design with an inexpensive V-bottomed hull. Their use spread to Brooklyn, Maine to become the founding class of the Center Harbor Yacht Club. Faint Endeavor was built between 1920 and 1922 by Graves Yachts in Marblehead and was owned and raced during the 1930s and 40s by writer E.B. White, creator of Stuart Little. The class apparently took its name from Burgess's Great Dane, who the neighbors called Brutal Beast. R. We Scott Pixie was the first boat of the founding racing class at Sorrento Yacht Club in Maine, a class that also raced at Deer Isle. The 15-foot Marconi rigged keel sloop was designed by Thomas D. Scott around 1922. Pixie was sail number seven, built in 1925 by Milton Boatyards in Rye, New York. Her V-bottom haul would have made her much cheaper than the Harrishoff 12 and a half like greased lightning. Some think the Harrishoff 12 and a half is the best small sailboat design ever built. While only 12 and a half feet on the waterline, 
Its large cockpit seats four in comfort. The boats are seaworthy, good-looking, well-built, and long-lasting. Designed by Nathaniel Harishoff and built by Harishoff Manufacturing Company in Bristol, Rhode Island, our Grace Lightning was hull number 1,447. In 1938, she was one of 16 sloops that North Haven Rusticators bought to start a fleet. In addition to canoes, Old Town got into the day sailor market with this 13-foot white cap sloop, which sold for $225 in 1939. In 1876, when the 56-foot coastal schooner Lindlian was built in Booth Bay Harbor, propulsion without wind or steam was a dream. As soon as gas motors came on the market in the early 1900s, schooners installed them into their yawl boats, which acted as miniature tugboats. It's hard to know when Lillian got this 13-foot, 4-inch helper. The 16-foot Little Elva is a captain's gig. The light boats carry the board Maine's merchant ships. It belonged to the son of Captain Robert Coombs of the ship Cora. The ship carpenter had built the gig on a return voyage from East Asia to New York out of teak and camphor wood. Captain Coombs carved the decorative woodwork. This 14-foot pulling boat from 1919 is one of the only two known survivors of the Thomas Fleming Day boat shop. He was the founding editor of the Rudder magazine, the first successful boating magazine in the U.S. After retiring from Rudder, Day opened up a shop on 8th Avenue in New York City and commissioned designers and builders to furnish him stock. With his experience, he knew what he wanted. The boat borrows elements from several styles, including the Whitehall. Recently, the wooden boat school students, under the tutelage of Greg Rossell, took the lines off this model and built a replica. Their line drawings are available to the public. Whether propelled by oars, sails, or motors, these recreational boats provide a way to explore and have fun on the coast of Maine. No longer limited to the summer colonies, now Mainers and those from away can launch a classic one-design racing boat, or recreational cruising design to gunk hole to their heart's content.